Greetings all, Gerald Clark with you on August 10th. Had some uh, items I wanted to discuss to tie some pieces of the news together for you and connect some dots. I usually come at uh, the news from an Anunnaki standpoint, uh, connecting their exopolitical motives and machinations on Earth with uh, the headlines, so that's usually the, the approach I'm going to take. So let's start with uh, discussing what's going on with the, do the U.S. dollar. So we all know that the petrodollar was set up based on everyone trading oil and involving the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. got rich off of that by establishing itself as the world's uh, currency reserve. This, this happened through the Federal Reserve back uh, early in the 20th century. I think it was in 1917, or they're very close. Um, I'll go back and check on that. But that being said, we know that that's the approximate date that uh, the United States then became subservient to the Federal Reserve, who it was backing them, and we now know it was the Jesuits. So um, in this article, uh, it starts reviewing a brief history of the petrodollar. Um, when Nixon, uh, on August 15, 1971, made the global economy based on the U.S. dollar and basically did it to ensure the world, if they traded in the dollar, that they could trade in their currency for gold as a as a insurance. They never planned on being the world's gold reserve. <laughs> but so uh, about the time uh, it got a little bit out of control, um, <clears throat> people started looking to trade in their dollars for gold. Well, this caused a, uh, a bleeding of the gold reserve in the United States, which prompted them to do something. So uh, here we see the U.S. dollar at that time. This was uh, prior to uh, the 1971 event. They'd fix it at a gold uh, fixed rate, and this made the U.S. dollar convertible gold at a fixed rate of 35 bucks per ounce with the global economic community. And uh, <clears throat> so Eventually, um, this led to a problem where they were just bleeding gold. So, uh, at that point, uh, they had what looked like four options. Increase income taxes to solve the problem with everybody wanting U.S. dollars but not having enough gold to cover it. Cutting the spending, borrow more money, or print money. Well, you know which route we took. We chose to print money. So. Uh, this this petrodollar is in trouble, and some <clears throat> organizations of the world are taking actions to bring the dollar down. So uh, this is a real uh, a real problem. So further down in the article, in 1971, as uh, it, this scheme progressed, so did the foreign demand for U.S. gold. And central banks began to cashing their excess dollars in exchange for the safety of gold. As they, as the nations lined up to convert their dollars, holding for Washington's gold, the United States realized the game was over. Clearly, America had never intended to be the globe's gold warehouse. Instead, the convertibility of the dollar into gold was meant to generate a global trust in U.S. paper money. Simply knowing the U.S. dollar could be converted into gold, if any necessary good was to be had some, not for everyone. The nations who began to doubt America's ability to manage their own financial house decided to opt for the recognized safety of gold. Um, so this poor fiscal monetary policy uh, led to uh, people demanding gold for their paper. <clears throat> so uh, that said, um, For those of you that have read my book, The Anunnaki Mimburu, you know I mentioned the Anglo-American Mining Corporation. Uh, this is a, a corporation that has multifaceted um, mining and ore strategies around the world. They were one of the largest mining companies in the world, going all the way back to, looks like, 1917. How interesting. About the time the Federal Reserve was set up. And it's quite interesting if you read through um, 
when they started and where they do business okay <clears throat> so in 1999 they merged with a Luxembourg-based uh, company from Menorca which had been responsible for their international assets they combined with the Anglo American corporation for South Africa interests. Now the reason uh, this is interesting to me is because uh, Michael Tellinger went to South Africa and followed the Sumerian account and made the, the under the premise that those African gold mines uh, that the Anunnaki started were still there and we now realize if you look at the Anglo-American Mining Corporation map you can see that they own the mines in the area that Michael Tellinger was talking about. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the very area we refer to. Now recently uh, there's been a real interesting development in, in South Africa over, oh I don't know, uh, <clears throat> a, a little bit of a disease scare with the with Ebola. And I wanted to talk about something real quickly that I discovered in the book Guns, Germs, and Steel that also involved gold. So back uh, in Peru, this is after Cortez had already conquered the area near Panama. Um, Pizarro went further south to an area called Cajamarca where um, he had a plan with 148, I believe, uh, Spanish soldiers to overtake uh, the Aztec Emperor uh, Atayapa, who uh, was significantly connected to his cousin was Montezuma, who purportedly had lots of gold. So they held him captive, uh, held him for ransom. They brought what appeared to be a room full of gold. He held his hand up high and said, bring this much and we'll give you and we'll let you free. Well, they killed him anyway and then went after Montezuma. So, so this quest for gold was quite interesting. Well, in that book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, it talks about how the, the germs from, that were brought in had a devastating effect on the populace all over that area and even in Mexico as well. So, um, so all of a sudden, keeping in the mind the idea of germs affiliated with the conquest for gold, uh, this might be a little shocking uh, when we look at this. So this new company has located a very, very large uh, reserve of gold. It was established in 2007. Now, remember before we said there was Anglo-American Mining Corporation. Now we've got the Viking mines. I wonder how those are related interesting terminology they chose. Anyway, this new one was established in 2007, exchange, uh, traded on the Australian exchange to explore for, develop, and mine minerals in Ghana, West Africa. They hold more than 250 square kilometers of ground in two project areas, West Star Blue River and Akawas East and West. Both projects are located in southern Ghana with the Ashanti Gold Belt, one of the most highly gold endowed and tightly held geological provinces in the world. So keeping that in mind, look at this very large <coughs> claim that they've staked in Ghana, South Africa. All right, very, very interesting. Now, um, let's, let's look at the next picture. So if you look at uh, Ghana here, in this area where the Akanasi mine is, you realize now all of a sudden that the same area is being f frightened by the Ebola virus that's in Sierra Leone and Liberia and Nigeria which is over here so these areas are surrounding this this Ghana area that they've staked out this mine I find that quite interesting <clears throat> I wanted to take a minute to do a little survey of South Africa to talk about uh, the Anunnaki gold mines and some of the housing structures, circular buildings that have been found there. I won't spend a lot of time because <clears throat> that's really Michael Tellinger's gig, but I did want to uh, give you this link and let you look at some of the pictures that have been found here. So uh, the claims are about 160 to 200,000 BCE, the same time the genetic program was being go going on in South Africa in the House of Shimpti. So um, <clears throat> you, there's an area here that he gives and then gives the coordinates in this article in this area. So if you go to South Africa right in between this area and preview this area in this region you can see a lot of these stone circles. Um, <clears throat> so here's a little timeline that's provided and then right down here are the coordinates for the four corner region where you can go and see some of these for yourself. 
Um, I was watching one, and I net wasn't able to find it, where he believed he'd found uh, Enki's headquarters with all kinds of mines and things like that there. So I'm, I'm looking for that. It, it was uh, another video I found. I, I may share it with you later. Here's Michael Tellinger uh, looking at some of the structures in South Africa. Okay, so uh, you can go on Google Earth and look at some of these yourself. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, and I'll scroll through this. So here's another coordinate you can look at. <clears throat> All right, so uh, now we know the Anunnaki were in South Africa you know, mining gold. Now the UK and the US with their Anglo-American and Viking corporations as their proxy agent out of Australia or down in Africa stealing gold again. Okay, call it investing. But somehow uh, they're taking away the country's most precious resource and have been since 1917 under whose authority? So uh, now we've had the CDC, uh, uh, let's talk about the CDC real quick before we do that, where they work. Uh, you can see they have a significant presence in Africa, uh, including all of these uh, regions here in South Africa that they mentioned, and almost all of them are focused on AIDS or Ebola. So uh, that said, uh, we know there's been a scare in the Let's go back to this area uh, here. So you can see this map. You can see right in Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Niger. This area over here is where the scare is. Well, notice how that these, this region surrounds Ghana, where this gold mine is, which sits right about in this region. Very interesting uh, coincidence, I think. Um, so uh, we saw just recently that the army evacuated two health workers from Africa that had been exposed to the virus. No one can figure out why they didn't just take this wonderful vaccine to Africa for them to partake of it there rather than bring them here. So that's that's very suspicious in and of itself. It, it creates a scare, which is I think partly what they want to distract us from some other things that are going on in the, in the, in the headlines. <clears throat> In this next article, the Ebola virus pandemic, a weapon of mass destruction by Joachim Hagopian. Now, he turns out to be a retired army uh, veteran and a really a good writer. He starts talking about uh, the hemorrhagic fever breaking out, which uh, <clears throat> started in February in the West African nation of Guinea, then spread from Liberia to Sierra Leone Niger and Nigeria. Notice the all four of these regions surround Ghana, where this massive gold deposit is keep that in mind. So, <clears throat> uh, later on in this article he talks about the death rate and so on and so forth, but he starts uh, getting further on down and starts talking about the CDC's role in this uh, in this process and <clears throat> and some places where it spread. It was quite interesting though as you get a little farther down into the article uh, you start realizing he has a perspective on how bioweapons are used in the military, and that part uh, really is quite interesting. So um, he starts making the case that uh, the, the aerosol could be uh, contagious within a certain range. Uh, we now know it's about three to five feet. If you're walking around somebody that close, you could get it. Uh, <clears throat> He, uh, we mentioned the other day Obama's quarantine uh, list, uh, so if you're coughing, he could put you in a quarantine and hopefully end you up in a FEMA camp. <clears throat> in 
further down, it starts talking about the development of a vaccine uh, for the for Ebola, okay, and who invested in it, and so on and so forth. And uh, also, there was a patent position filed by the United States. Uh, they have a patent on Ebola, so that uh, they're uh, able to sell the vaccine to everyone else. And uh, I think I have a page on that just recently. But this is where it got interesting in the article. In Sierra Leone, they kicked out the Ebola researchers from Tulane University and the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Defectious, Infectious Diseases. This was a, a known center for biowar research headquartered at Fort Detrick, Maryland. Just prior to that event, two weeks ago, after three nurses died from viral hemorrhagic fever, Sierra Leone nurses working heavily infested Kanima District actually went on strike accusing the government's Ministry of Health and Sanitation of mishandling the pandemic that is rapidly spreading. Okay, so you've got insiders that are disgruntled with how uh, this thing's being treated. And later in the paragraph it says, it, is, it legitimately asks, have Tulane researchers done something to endanger public health? We, meanwhile, more people are becoming infected and dying there in Sierra Leone, and, and uh, so they're very concerned. <clears throat> so further down, back in 2009, the Tulane Uver University Ebola researchers received more than $7 million grant from the National Institute of Health to fund the detection kits allegedly used in Sierra Leone. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> they boasted of an earlier $3.8 million grant that led to the early test trials of the diagnostic kits that will aid in bioterrorism defense against a deadly viral disease. You have to understand the Army considers Ebola a weapon of mass destruction. So this ind indicates that the biowarfare research team had ex been experimenting with its kits on the Sierra Leone people for at least seven years before they were ultimately banished recently. So uh, there's some uh, crazy stuff going on in there. Uh, <clears throat> he gives some advice about taking vitamin C to head it off, help your immune system, but doesn't make any guarantees. Uh, so, so there you have uh, some other interesting news about the CDC, the World Health Organization, and this potential scare uh, uh, that's going on. And here, uh, the position, the patent position uh, from the United States is discussed. And I didn't go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to bring up the actual patent, but if anybody's interested in it, we can do that. So here, from the patent description on the virus, the government states that it can extract the Ebola virus from patients, claims to have invented the virus, and files for a monopoly patent protection on the virus. So that has, that has to make you wonder about uh, what kind of uh, evil they're up to uh, <laughs> patenting of a virus like this for, that's known to be a weapon of mass destruction. I'm going to close this with a summary to give you my hypothesis about what's going on. Number one, the evil scheme of the United States to set up a petrodollar to steal the resources from the rest of the world has finally come to an end. And the BRICS nations are making sure of that. So you should expect to see uh, the United States either moving to implement the North American Amero so they can hide the fact that the U.S. dollar has been plummeted, or potentially, like I'm suggesting, to go shore up enough gold such that the U.S. dollar had some backing and reestablished some oh, sense of security that people could trade their paper for gold and that the, the superpower is still going to make that okay for them. So given that, uh, this, this insur insurgence in the African Leader Summit that just happened this last week involving African leaders, sponsored by the United States, while the Ebola vi virus and epidemic is going on, uh, seem kind of fishy to me. So there's clearly an imperialistic move to further exploit the resources of Africa that has been going on forever, but now it's getting quite focused. And the focus of the United States, my premise is, we don't have any gold anymore because uh, we've we've already uh, had that Ponzi scheme pulled uh, pulled out from under us. So we're going to go establish um, some stakes in Africa through our proxy agent, uh, this investor and corporate mining corporation, the Viking Corporation, sponsored out of Australia, to go get some African land that we now know holds more gold. Hey, what happened, Inky? Did you did you overlook that that big pile, or did you just not get to it? 
that being said, uh, it's over a million ounces according to the, what they've released so far, and there's probably a lot more. <clears throat> so they surround the stake in Ghana, um, put up their claim, uh, bring in the scare tactics of the CDC with disease uh, security surrounding the area, and only the people that get the vaccine are the ones that are stealing the gold for Obama. How's that sound for you? So think about that as you're looking at this whole scheme unfold and see if that doesn't ring true. We'll do something more positive next time, hopefully on the human energy body and some other uh, ascension techniques. But for now, it's, it's interesting to tie where the Anunnaki were working, getting gold to um, put in their atmosphere and protect their planet while you see what's going on with the new world order forces now that are not operating in accordance with the tenets that Enki had set forth uh, as um, the chief deity of Atlantis as Poseidon, working for, toward character qualities, but instead pursuing greed and willing to exterminate anyone else that might possibly transgress their gold mining claim in Ghana, and also the ones owned by the Anglo-American Mining Corporation down in South Africa. So could it be that <clears throat> The same gold seekers uh, from the Anglo-American -Mining, Mining Corporation, which on their website state that they have a public relations relationship with uh, the Centers for Disease Control relative to AIDS and HIV. So, so all of a sudden this uh, mixing of disease with gold is starting to get a little overwhelming. It goes way back in history and it's still going on. So... Uh, Take a look, uh, see what you think, and I'll leave links for everyone to, t to follow up on this research. I think I was paused that whole time. Damn it.